So welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to do a drive on this beautiful 2022 Grand Cherokee. This is an Overland, so this is gonna slot between the Trailhawk and the Summit. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything here. Now, a few things I really wanna test out on this one is gonna be just the self-driving. I've done this in the past, but I think it's kinda of cool to try it out again. And yeah, I already have my phone connected, so I have the Apple CarPlay in here. So here's some of the features for that. And you have USBs down below. But let's go ahead and get started. So obviously this does have a smart key system, so you have push button start. And so what we're gonna do, is we're gonna slip this key right here. So Jeep does give you a convenient spot for a key. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn these seat massagers on. So if you hit the button on the side, you can have that on and I'm gonna turn my cooled seats on too. And I'll let you guys know my impressions with that. One thing I will say about Chrysler products is they have the best like heated and cool seat temperatures. It will burn you out of the seat and it will freeze you out of the seat. So here's your shifter. You have, you know, park, reverse, neutral and drive. Now, if you were to hit a paddle shifter up here, we're gonna hit the plus. You'll see that it changed it right up there. And if you hold it, it'll go back to drive. So just keep that in mind. So now we are headed off. So I didn't show this to you in the last video, but you do have a heads up display. I think you guys can see the heads up display right there. It's right there. It just shows the miles per hour. Now I don't see where you can adjust it. So for now, we'll just keep it the way it is. All right, so let's go ahead and go. Now, one thing I'll say, if you are new to driving a Grand Cherokee or any brand, I always recommend if you want the best ride, I do think that having the air suspension does make a really big difference. But that's just me. That's just me. Some people might say that the regular suspension is just fine. Now maneuvering around the parking lot, steering is pretty stiff. Typically on other brands I've noticed that it would get a little softened but, or easier to steer, but it's still easy, just a little bit more stiffer, which I like. Now I like that stiffer feel at higher speeds. All right, so coming to the first stoplight, I am gonna reset the fuel economy too on the trip A. We'll just do a quick fuel economy run on this one. So we'll just do it right here. Now, as I mentioned in the last video, this does have a stop start function. You can turn it off up top here. And you don't really feel it when you start off either, which is nice. So it has a quick response when you take your foot off the brake. I just reset the fuel economy. And yeah, so far so good. This is definitely comfortable. My seat massagers feel good. The cool seats is definitely working perfectly. Let's turn that down a little bit. I love how these SUVs and trucks all have all these great features now. Now, if you are in the controls area too, you can you know, turn on your forward-facing camera as you're driving too. I mean, I don't recommend you do this, but it is available to you even when you're driving. All right, so we're about to head over to the highway, so I'll give you guys some acceleration. The air suspension really does, you know, feel like a pillow when you're driving. It feels like you're just kind of galloping over the bumps. And you really almost don't even notice that, you know, this is a SUV. You almost feel like you're driving a car in a lot of cases. You just sit a little bit higher. All right, so I'm gonna mess up my fuel economy here. One thing I've noticed too, you have to use your signal even if you're just merging because the systems do recognize the line. So it's pushing you away from them. So I'm going about 55 miles an hour. Accelerate. 60. 70. Yeah, this definitely feels underpowered compared to the 5.7. It's not bad. It's not bad, but 
I don't know. I, I would prefer that just for a, a little bit more grunt. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put it in the self-driving. All right, here we go. There it is. So it found the lines. So you're supposed to keep your hands on the steering wheel. I don't have my hands on the steering wheel, as you can see. And so we're pretty much driving now. You can see that it went orange inside of here because it's telling you to put your hands on the steering wheel. So I'm going to cancel this because we're going to get off right here. And I'll show you guys a longer drive with that too here in a second. But like I said, man, the steering does feel a little loose right now. You can put it in sport mode and that probably will tighten things up a little bit. And I'm pretty sure that the air suspension is probably in like the aero mode. You can drive in the normal mode too. So I'm taking the turn right now, accelerating. Oh man, this, this feels good. This feels really good. It's hard to believe that this is an SUV sometimes. Sometimes when I've driven these in the past, I was just so amazed by how well they handle. Uh, they're quiet, the interior just feels like, like your home almost. So despite a few accelerations, we're still about 18.4 MPG. So we've only gone three miles. So I'll try to get as close to 10 miles as I can. The Grand Cherokee just turned off. If you have the AC on or the heat on, it does make the system come back on quicker. I'd never use the system in the summertime because the AC gets warm and it's just uncomfortable. So I always turn off in the summertime. However, in the wintertime and in the fall season when it's not too hot, I will leave it on and I do notice a little bit of a, a pickup in the fuel economy it's not much you're probably saving maybe a, f a couple miles but if you do live in a city I think the 4xe will probably be the best bang for the buck if, if you're not driving that far because you'll probably never have to put fuel in the Grand Cherokee with that system because it's gonna be a all-electric and a gas engine all right guys so we just sat here for about a couple minutes Stop start system works great. And if you just tap down the the turn signal stop, it does give you three chimes for your turn. So you don't have to turn it back off or if you're changing lanes, things like that, you don't have to worry about clicking it back up. Visibility is really good too. That rear pillar is like the only thing that's blocking you, but that glass out back is pretty, pretty big. All right, so we're gonna get back on the highway. Lost a little bit of MVG. I'm at 17.7. I think when it's all said and done, if you do like a lot of highway driving, you can easily get 22, 23 miles per gallon. I mean, that's just driving moderately. Now, if you are, you know, trying to get the best for the economy you can. I've been able to get out of my old Grand Cherokees, 25, 26, like on the highway, just doing long travel days, you know, in it. So it's very possible to get really good feeling economy out of these things if you take it easy on the throttle. So we're gonna go ahead and put it back in automatic driving mode. All right, here it is. So it's once it illuminates green inside of here, I think you guys can see the greenness on the side. That's how you know the system's on. Now, the only thing I don't like about this self-driving is when you do get behind slow cars, this is gonna just keep you at the same speed as the car in front of you. So you have to obviously cancel it out, get around the car, and you just have to keep doing that. Now, if you're okay with just driving at whatever speed you want, like this road is 70 miles an hour. I'm going 45 basically. Now we're about to get off. On a, on a ramp here. Let me just keep the system on here because let's see if it's gonna take me around this turn. This is a pretty, oh, see that? Curve too tight, take control of vehicle. So <laughs> I'm glad I saw that. So it says, curve too tight, take control of the vehicle. So this system's not gonna turn that steering wheel all the way to get around that curve. So it seems like it's still driving the car like, so I'm not still giving it any braking or gas. It's doing it all by itself, but I'm just giving it a little bit of help with the steering. All right, so let's see if it goes back green again and see it's in there. Okay, now it just went green. So now it's saying, hey, the steering's fine. I, I can take control of it again. All right, 
Now, if I turn the signal on, it does disable the system, so just keep that in mind. We're gonna get around this slow truck. All right, so we'll get up to about 70. All right. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, so the system, yeah, I just have my hand, I'm not doing anything. I'm just letting it drive me. So the radar cruise control, everything's working. You can set the distance for that too. Oh, see a car just jumped in front of me, so it's slowing me down. So if you want, you can change the distance of the cars. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So you can change the distance. See that? See all those lines popping up? You can change the distance of the cars in front of you if you want to, you know, just follow a little bit closer. But that is the closest you can get. So it's still pretty far away. That's probably like what? Maybe two car lengths. But this is a cool system. I think that if you do a lot of driving, this really does take a little bit of pressure off of the, the trip, in my opinion. I think that. Um, I would not use this in the city. I would not use this on back roads. As you saw, if you take a tight turn, it will turn off at any moment. Like it won't even help you. So this is perfect for the highway, especially when you're in stop and go traffic. It'll really help, you know, just take some of that fatigue off of you. Um, and that system, I think is optional on the Grand Cherokee Overland, but it is standard on the higher trim level. So just keep that in mind. So if you are ordering one, you may have to opt for it. But overall, I love this. I think that the brakes, everything feels good. Like I'm gonna hit the brakes now. Oh yeah, it's just, everything's just so plush. I mean, it is a new SUV, so it's gonna, of course, everything's gonna be great at the, at the beginning, but you know, the brakes aren't touchy, the tires, everything work well together. And all these different systems to keep you comfortable, like you're heated and cooled seats. For some reason, my heated seat, I must have pushed the button by mistake. But it just, everything works well. I mean, the seat massager, it does help a little bit. I turned it off, I kind of got annoying for me, but, but I think if you are in the market, I think that this is something you have to put on your list. I think you're doing yourself an injustice not looking at this. And yeah, I would definitely consider this for my wife if that's what she wanted. So we went on a quick trip, eight miles, highway, a little bit of city, got 20.5, 20.6 miles to the gallon. Not bad. I'm actually really happy with those numbers. Um, definitely, if you're in the market, this is something I would definitely put on my list for sure because I think you can get, you can probably get closer to 23, you know, if you're just driving moderately on the highway. I think you can get better than that, but you don't have to use premium gas. And I think this has the styling, this has the, the features that a lot of SUVs don't have today. And yeah, you can do it in style. I think that the Grand Cherokee is one of those models that you really just, when you see them, you just know that it's something special. And I think that, you know, with Stellantis, you know, merging with Chrysler, I think that you can really see that they're really going to the next level with this brand. And even when you think about the Wagoneer and the Grand Cherokee L, like every model that they have from Jeep is just really a top notch unit. And this is a really good example of that. I think that the ride quality, I think the feel, I think that when you get in this, you feel good. You know, I think sometimes when you drive a car, I've owned cars in the past where I just, you know, I, I bought it because it was a good deal or whatever the case was. But when I got inside of this, I felt good about it. And I think that's the feeling you want when you're spending close to $66,000. So on that note, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to give me a thumbs up, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.